Welcome back to our Dream in the Woods. Today we are, uh, my brother-in-law Eric and I are going to start working on the H fixture for a uh, new service, new power service. And we're going to install that ourselves. I was able to track down a 400 amp all-in-one box, um, meter and, and connection box. Uh, so that was kind of lucky. I'd been having trouble finding that. And I think we've gathered all the pieces that we need for to install that and to run all the pipe up to where the power is buried and the gas is buried. So uh, we'll be working on that today. I'm going to install it over here where these stakes are. Avista, our local uh, power company, they will install a transformer there on the left. And on the right will be where the H fixture is and the meter. So I need to clear out all oh, my pallets and stickers and all the stuff, get this ready. And then Eric will be over here shortly with the backhoe and we'll start digging, doing a little digging and cleanup. Um, the power is up through this road and to the front of our property. It, it uh, comes across, but we'll have to do about 400 feet of trenching and then we're going to install the, the pipe for that. This is kind of the big supplies there. The transformers in, or the, the meter is in that uh, cardboard box there. Uh, 400 feet of two inch scheduled 40 and then three inch for between the meter and the transformer. Uh, some heavy two inch metal pipe some unibrackets there, a couple different sizes there, some two inch, uh, two copper ground watt rods. That's all the bulky material. So just getting things laid out, I went two feet from the property line and then gave myself 25 feet away from the sawmill cover. And then the transformer base doesn't really matter. Uh, it's got to be 10 feet over. We're going to uh, use a 10 foot piece of conduit so it'll bring itself over 10 feet. We'll just want to make sure that that's at least two feet off the property line. So this is the first look at the 400 amp meter all in one. So we didn't know exactly what we were getting, but I'll open it up and show you what we got. So that's where the power comes in and where the meter will be. Uh, that's all pre-wired to the two panels, so I won't have to mess with any of that. All we'll have to do is put a three inch conduit into it down here and the power company will take care of the rest. This is one 200 amp service and then a second 200 amp service. These will be some breakers that we'll be able to use um, around the property. Uh, this will be a dedicated 200 that'll go to the house. Um, so I'll be able to spread some um, power around with the remaining 200. That's the plan there. So pretty happy with it. Uh, heavy. Uh, it's definitely a two-man lift. I don't know how much the thing weighs, but it's, it's, uh, it's got some weight to it. So Eric's going down. Uh, digging this out uh, so we can set the sauna tube in and uh, lay the conduit over to the where the transformer is going to be. Sure is nice to have a backhoe on site and an operator that knows how to run it.
All right, so what we got going on here is the directions say that I need to have 36 inches of sauna tube down. These are 48 inches, um, so they're going to go down a little bit deeper, but we're going to leave them above, oh, three, four inches above grade. Um, and so we're just going to seat those in there. Uh, we're making them about 46 to 48 inches apart. You did 46 or 48 inches? I did 48. 48 inches apart, uh, center of post. And then we ran this line. This isn't exactly the property line, but it's close. So, yeah, it, you know, and so we're going off that. So if someday this needs to have a fence behind it, we can do it. Um, and then we'll kind of keep that line uh, where, where we're going to put the transformer. So um, next step is we're going to put some material in the bottom. The conduit going over the transformer has to be at least 30 inches uh, to the top of the conduit. So that's kind of what our next step is, stabilize these things um, and kind of get them set in there. So we're doing it. We got our sauna tube set. They're level. The main thing is that these posts are level and or plumb and that they're parallel to one another. Um, so we made a collar up there. Um, and then once we get these set with the bracing, uh, we're also going to maybe put a unistrut on it. Um, then they will be set. Uh, the other thing we did while they're up in the air is that we put the caps on, which Eric calls collars. <laughs> which just I one time, just the one time. <laughs> which I got confused. I didn't know what the heck he was talking about collars. So anyway, making projects. Stuff's happening. It's awesome. So we're still working on getting this rigid, which it's rigid now. Um, I think we're going to put two unit struts up and then we might have to go to the store, get some more pieces. So Eric and I are doing our calculations of where the unit struts need to go. And so on this panel, we have two there one here and then a single one up in this corner right there uh, so that kind of determines that and then the next piece of math we have to do is we have this uh, three inch underground is how to clear this pipe over where the transformer how do we get around that sauna tube and so we're just trying to do the depth or how far forward does that need to be 
to try to get it off to the left hand side here um, and not be at a huge angle. If it's forward of the transformer, it's, it's plenty fine, but uh, we want to minimize that. This has uh, two other ways to mount. It has these here that could get framed in, and then these down here, there's four of these. There's two down here and two up there, so you've got several ways to attach it, not just the interior ones there. And then what we're trying to figure out right now is which unistrut to use on the pole, and if we can use, instead of stacking unistruts, we can use one that would clamp that three inch pipe coming up without having to stack it. So the unistrut that we're talking about is this one right here, um, and it needs to clamp to the three inch and then any other pipes coming out of the, the meter there um, and to get that spacing correct. So the two styles of unistruts we have, uh, looks like that one is about three quarters. And that's an inch and a half-ish, somewhere in there. So, could use the skinny one for the panel and the fat one for the, for the clamps for the power coming in and the power coming out. But it misses. It's, there's three quarters of an inch between the two. Uh -huh. And we need about an inch, inch and a quarter, inch and an eighth. So you might still have to stack them to get them right. Either washers or... Yeah, or we use the big one, and then we use a big one plus this. So stack them, or so we'll have to think about it. Yeah, think things we think about. Okay, we've gotten to the point where we're ready to do concrete. I'm just going to do mix it in the wheelbarrow concrete. I said I need 11 bags. I've got 12 just in case. Um, these unistruts um, are mounted at pretty close to where they're going to need to be to mount the box. There'll be a third one that goes in between, but we just wanted to stabilize it. And so those are on there, but they're not, we'll probably have to fiddle with them again, but everything's true, plumb level. Um, so we're ready for concrete as the next step. So the electric company uh, sent this PDF to me of how to install and assemble the 400 meet, uh, amp meter service and it's a I don't know how many pages document it is it's close to 20 21 pages and it goes through everything that you need a little schematic there that you need there um, more directions then it kind of just goes step by step there's the uh, supply list we went 48 inches on our uh, form there. And it's just kind of nice uh, of how to go through this and how to install everything. So uh, if you'd like a link to that PDF or a copy of that, um, just email me. We'll, that'll be in the description. And it'll go through at least the directions that we're going off of and we'll include all the pieces um, that are needed to install your own 400 amp service. And part of the benefit of living here in North Idaho and, and where we do in a rural community is that we're able to do this by ourselves. 
Um, neither Eric or I are elect, uh, electricians, and, but they have a, a place for a homeowner to do this. It has to be uh, inspected by the state, so we're trying to do everything as perfect as we can so we pass inspection. So, but it is a, it is a, I don't think in many places that you could do this on your own. So, but um, I'd be happy to supply that PDF. It's very helpful for how to go through that. And hopefully this video is helpful for that too. So let's make some concrete. Mix the last batch a little wetter than the first two or four, I guess, batches. Uh, I did listen to my buddy Greg, told me that I was mixing it too wet before, so definitely much drier. Uh, Eric was in charge of the water, so yeah, a little harder with mixing concrete by hand with a dryer like that, but sounds like it makes it stronger, so. We have these poured up, framed up, so we'll just let those set. That's going to be all we get accomplished on this project today. So next up, we're going to, I got a four day weekend coming up. Uh, the We're going to get that meter mounted and ready for inspection. I'm going to order that inspection for the following Monday. and. Uh, we're actually going to rent a mini excavator to dig the trench. Had a little trouble with the backhoe. It just blew a seal on the ram on the um, backhoe bucket, uh, the second big ram. So it needs to go to the doctor, get fixed. Um, but we also have a second project with that mini excavator that we'll uh, do. Um, also going to do some pre-planning for uh, while we put those um the, the conduit in for the power uh we're also going to be thinking about um where we need power here on the property so anyway lots to come i appreciate you watching and make sure you hit like and subscribe and we'll catch you next time little by little, piece by piece i take back what's been stolen from me little by little piece by piece until i'm complete